All right, everyone, this is the round seven recap for Kings and Kaisers. Uh, Moose Cow has offered me to do the recaps now just because uh, now since China is unified, I will be taking the final turn of the round. So it makes sense that I would handle the recap because that's that. So I've already taken my China turn, but I did forget to use um, the Northern Imperial Dynasty's money, which I do get since I'm unified. Uh, the six dollars here so i have two infantry to place so i'm going to go ahead and put them in one in yunnan and one in seeking yeah one in seeking nah you know what let them come in uh, i'll put one in hope okay so there you go that's the disposition there'll be three infantry three artillery in hope one infantry in jahar one infantry in sejang three infantry in kuang tung two in yunnan Cool. Okay, so let's look at this whole turn and see what happened here. As you can see, the Atlantic is completely dominated by the Allies. Finally, on round eight, it took till. So that's, I feel like that's quite an achievement as essential powers to hold on to the Atlantic that long. But uh, I had a good fight with those subs. I declared under, unrestricted warfare just, just for the heck of it at the end. I, I was trying to look for my opening to use it all game um, with my subs. If you don't know what an unrestricted warfare is, that means that for one turn only, the German subs can roll at three or less instead of two or less, and they convoy with up to three dice. So um, he never had enough ships in range for me to take out with the unrestricted warfare. Um, so... I just declared it now and moved a bunch of subs around to C-Zone 17, 2, and 20 to try and pull his ships away and make him fight me. So that's that. That's the end of the German Navy. But there you go. Um, let's start with Austria-Hungary, though, because they go first in the turn, or turn order. They railed some units up to Bavaria to help, uh, help the Germans. Um, they also moved some forces forward from Rome and Veneto and Tuscany to Piedmont. So there's a standoff with the French here. Um, just building up. They're building up their navy again. Three more cruisers. Um, the previous turn built uh, two dreadnoughts and two subs. So there is some Suez action happening, going to be happening soon because the Ottomans came in here and knocked out a French transport. British came and killed the cruiser, but they damaged the dreadnought. So the Suez being open to the Central Powers means that Austria-Hungary can start sending ships this way and maybe deal with this problem. So. Um, other than that, they, uh, the Austria-Hungary built all ground units, used their transport in the Black Sea to chuck over two more infantry in the Caucasus, and just shuffling things around, getting ready. Um, that's <clears throat> pretty much it. Just holding the line in Caucasus, holding the line in Italy, helping out Germany a little bit, uh, building up a little bit in the Balkans in case there's an invasion, and that's it. Um... Moving on to the Russian Civil War, uh, the Soviets ended up going first in the roll-off. So they uh, convincingly took Kazan with uh, lots of force and built new units there. So um, <clears throat> they're marching their way east, see what happens. But they got, the Allies have a huge force that is uh, forming here. They got lots of Japanese, lots of white Russians, and even Americans over there. Um, over here in Estonia, it's just a standstill, pretty much. And Ingria built two more units, sensing an invasion coming pretty soon from the Allies if they loop around. So, we'll see. I don't think the Soviets will be able to hold on. As good as it looks over here in this part of the map, it looks very bad over here. And it could potentially look bad up in the north. So, I don't think there's any way they can hold on. Uh, moving on to the Germans. The Germans have been building all turn in Rhine, or sorry, all game in Rhine province, just build, 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 and now they've moved everything south one space into Alsace, so um, getting ready for something. Uh, Alsace does border Belgium and Lorraine, so if they advance, that's where they're going to be going. Um, just built all ground units once again, just hunkering down because we got all this to deal with, so... That's what's coming. Uh, in in response, France moved its forces up to Belgium, all seven of its fighters. The Americans landed their biggest force there as well, so there's a huge standoff here. Um, Americans also landed in Brittany. There's one British here. British built uh, some transports the previous term, or sorry, this turn uh, in Canada, so they can bring those guys over. I anticipate many more transports coming. Um, France just hunkered down with more ground units, sent units down the province to keep Austria-Hungary honest over here. Um, they, uh, their Navy took out 
a small fleet of uh, German subs in 17. The British uh, took out the subs in 20, and the Americans took out the subs in 2. So everybody's working together to take out those Central Power subs. Uh, Japan, we kind of were already over here before, but uh, Britain and Japan declared war on China. So that's big news because uh, since the National Protection War was still going on, uh, it was looking like the Central Power side was going to win. So they came in and just invaded everywhere. So that and that in result unified all of China. So China is now a central power. Um, so, but the fact that they've taken the entire coast, it doesn't even matter because they, I, I have five IPCs to work with. So that's something that uh, me and Muscow are going to be addressing um, in the rules. Um, it's something that I was warning about in the past that I think the Allies have too easy of a, of a go here in China. If anything goes wrong, you know, there's no resistance. So we're talking about maybe having like a Soviet style NO, like how the Soviets get. Uh, sorry, kids are screaming in the background. The Soviets get like a basically a plus 10 NO just to offset Allied involvement. And I think the same is needed for China because they can't defend their coast and fight a civil war at the same time. It's just not possible, if, especially if you're not get, winning the roll-offs either. So, so the Allies are going to get a bunch of free victory points in China. They're going to get the China point. They're going to get two minor cities eventually and probably the Empire point for Britain and France because of all the added IPCs. So congratulations. Um, that's all pretty much Japan did. They built some more over here, sent more forces this way, just helping out in the Russian Civil War. Um, going on to the Ottomans. Oh, the Ottomans. Um, still staying put here in Caucasus. Um, moved out of the Syrian desert, took Hejaz back from the French because they backed out. Um, like I mentioned before, their cruiser came in the 36, not, knocked out a French transport, but they lost it to the British. Uh, and now they're moving some forces south. So as you can see from Egypt, they had a large force and it's moving south. They did take out the last Italian unit in Africa, last Italian ground unit on the board uh, over in French Equatorial Africa. So, and, uh, oh, they took Serenatia. They had one infantry in Libya, took Tunisia. So they are just spreading like wildfire right now, trying to help out the Germans in Africa. Other than that, built all ground units and built their first tank over here in Mamara. So... Who knows what I'm doing with that? Um, after the Ottomans, um, basically the Italians, they're, I forgot to move these, by the way, but their cruiser moved down to 12, and the transport, uh, American units boarded onto that transport. So the Italians are still being somewhat useful for the Allies. Um, the Americans landed on Gibraltar. They uh, moved two dreadnoughts. Uh, I think it's two cruisers here in a transport over in this sea zone, so they might be doing some Mediterranean action. Landed more units in Brittany. They got more units coming over here. They got their first fighter and tank. Built some more cruisers and a sub, uh, sorry, not a sub, a transport. Like I mentioned before, their four cruisers took out uh, the, the German subs in two, but they lost two subs of their own in the process. So that was kind of cool. At least I took somebody out. Um, and they landed, like I mentioned, their largest force in Belgium. Um, and then over in the Pacific side of things, they're continuing that chuck of units um, from 67 back on the other side of the board and just landing units in Far East to help out in the Russian Civil War. So that's that. And China happened. So, you know, as I mentioned before, I just tried to fight back and contest these coastal territories because Britain had taken them. Their forces in Hong Kong just walked in because the Civil War was going on up here. So um, that's that. So, um, that is round seven in a nutshell. Round eight is coming up. We're getting real close to the end here. I anticipate some big, big battles coming, especially on the Western front here, because it's looking like it's, it's building towards that. Um, I don't think the Soviets are going to pull it out. Don't, Chinese definitely will not win. Um, the Ottomans, let's see if they can continue spreading the wildfire in Africa. And something's got to pop over here in the Middle East, too. So we'll see. So, yeah. Okay, so let's look at the tracker now. Um, so it looks like the Allies have at least the three minor cities. Let's see here. They, they're going to eventually have Peking, the, the other Chinese city, for sure. Uh, let's see if they have any other ones. No. So they have three minor cities. They've got that. The Central Powers have... They have seven minor cities now. Um, oops, knocked over my stuff. Um, that's the Empire Point. Just double-checking everything. 
They have Pacific for sure. Uh, Africa is technically a tie right now, so no one has the Africa point. Uh, Middle East oil, no one has that point either. So let me just do a count here. So the Central Powers have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 12 victory points right now. The Allies have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. They have 7. So the score is 12 to 7 right now, Central Powers. Um, but that's going to change soon. I already gave the Allies the China point because it's inevitable. I gave them the fate of Russia point because technically they are winning the fate of Russia point. It's whoever controls the most uh, original Russian territories during the uh, Russian Civil War. So currently the Allies have one, two, three, four, five, uh, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. They have ten of them. Soviets don't have that much. So they're going to win that one too. So I've already put that down for them. I mean, things could change, but I put that down for them. Um, but it looks like the Central Powers will walk in and take Verdun this turn. Possibly. It's wide open. So, Or no, he did build two infantry there. Sorry, they moved over from Burgundy. Yeah, he had two infantry there. Um, so that's that. Um, nothing else to go over. So 12 to 7. Uh, it's probably going to get even more narrow because uh, the China thing really adds a lot of IPCs to Britain. Um, potentially. So... It's exciting. It's been a fun game. It's, you know, for only having one round of combat per battle, this has been an incredibly dynamic game, and I'm sure all of you have seen that. It is it is not as slow as perhaps the uh, original 1914, for sure. I mean, adding some ra railing in here and some of the other original ideas that we added into this game really make it dynamic. So hope you guys are enjoying it. I am too, um, and looking forward to round eight.